Hello everyone and welcome to Kernel of Wisdom. I'm Joelle and today I'm here with Natalie Mulligan and we are talking about what an eating disorder is not. So I'm a counselor and psychotherapist who specializes in eating disorder treatment. I'm a naturopathic doctor and I have a special interest in eating disorders. We're actually not allowed to say we specialize in something. <laughs> All right, over the last couple of weeks, Natalie and I have shared a lot of information about what an eating disorder is. So we thought it could be really valuable to talk about what an eating disorder is not. First, we'll define what an eating disorder is. So the Mayo Clinic defines eating disorders as serious conditions related to persistent eating behaviors that negatively impact your health, your emotions, and your ability to function in important areas of life. It further qualifies them by saying, most eating disorders involve focusing too much on your weight, body shape, and food, leading to dangerous eating behaviors. According to this definition, notice that an eating disorder is not normal or common, meaning this isn't something that all young women or even most young women experience. It's not a phase. It's not a desire to lose weight. It's not characterized by a particular body type or body weight. It's not being sensitive or insecure about your body as a whole or parts of your body. It's not about control. It's not attention seeking. And it's not something to be taken lightly or a choice. So an eating disorder is not normal or common. Part of the definition of a disorder is that it's something that deviates from what the average person experiences in their life. And so what makes an eating disorder a disorder is that they're relatively uncommon. There may be relatable pieces to it, but by and large, because it's not something that most people go through to the degree that someone with an eating disorder goes through, it's really hard for the average person to understand and fully, in an embodied way, relate to what's going on for them. So while a lot of people can absolutely appreciate what it's like to have some level of body dissatisfaction, to get frustrated with your weight or shape, someone with an eating disorder is experiencing this in a much more complex way and at a very different extreme. And so it's not quite the same. An eating disorder is not a phase, which means this isn't something that's short-lived or it's, it's, not, it's not something that someone will grow out of and it's not something that's a reaction to a life event that's happened. It would be normal to have some level of weight fluctuation after a significant life event, so a breakup, a job loss, a loss of a loved one. These sorts of emotional upheavals that happen in someone's life can have a change in appetite accompany them. This would be considered normal and an eating disorder is not this. An eating disorder is significantly more severe than this and won't resolve once the dust, the dust settles following that life upheaval. An eating disorder also is not a desire to lose weight. So it can look like it starts with a diet. It can look like it starts with, I'm just going to shed a few pounds. But that person already has some mental, biological, and social structures in place where the disorder's starting to express itself at that point, but it's already, there's disordered thinking and disordered patterns before that expression comes forward. It's kind of like this individual kind of stumbles upon food, dieting, and a desire to control weight and shape as a way to express some of the emotional and psychological turmoil that's already there. What happens is over time, more and more emphasis is put on weight and shape and desires to control it through eating and food. But it's not just about that. It's not necessarily what initiated it. There can be all sorts of contributing factors that are operating behind the scenes. And sometimes for some people, one important question is to ask yourself what the obsession with food and weight is helping that person to avoid or distract themselves from. Also note the word desire. This isn't a desire to lose weight. The engaging in extreme dieting or attempts at weight loss is more of a compulsion. It's a means of trying to feel something different than what they're feeling in their current state or environment. That's something different than the kind of exclusive desire to just lose five or 10 pounds. 
Next, an eating disorder is not characterized by a particular body weight or body shape. It's definitely a myth that someone with an eating disorder will look like they have an eating disorder. In fact, most people with eating disorders don't look like they have an eating disorder. The textbook image that comes to mind when the average person thinks of an eating disorder would be that of an emaciated man or woman who would be dealing with anorexia. The large majority of patients that have an eating disorder do not look like this. Even a huge majority of patients with anorexia do not look like this. And it's really, really important to know that someone's body shape or body weight is actually not a reliable indicator of how unwell they are. So what that means is, it's not proportional that the skinnier someone is, the more sick they are. Some of the most high-risk eating disorder patients, and high risk here unfortunately means most likely to have a fatal outcome as a result of their eating disorder, are actually people who live in a totally normal body shape with a normal body weight. For example, bulimia nervosa, most patients have, that are suffering from this have a very, very normal body weight, but they are at a hugely high risk of a fatal outcome caused by heart failure, esophageal rupture, gastric rupture, which would be stomach rupture. But if you just look at their body shape or body weight, you would never know they're sick. An eating disorder also is not just about being sensitive or insecure about your body on the whole or parts of your body. Those may be aspects that are present, but that's not what the whole thing is about. Being insecure or sensitive about your body is a really normal experience and therefore not the kind of core piece of this disorder. For someone with an eating disorder, the impact of this body insecurity and sensitivity goes far beyond their body and far beyond what would typically be considered normal. You see, for someone with an eating disorder, the sensitivity and insecurity about one's body permeates into pretty much all areas of their life. It becomes crippling. It stops them from being able to function and participate in life fully. It gets in the way much, much, much more than it would for the average person. One more point on this is that people often think that everyone with an eating disorder will also have what's called body dysmorphic disorder, where they can't accurately perceive their body, and that may or may not be present, but isn't inherently there. Next, an eating disorder is not about control. Many people who have children with eating disorders or loved ones with eating disorders will have done some research on their own about what an eating disorder is. And what I've found is most people come to this place of understanding an eating disorder to be about control, and it's just, it's just really not about that. The word control is, is really just much too simplistic to explain what an eating disorder is actually about. An eating disorder is about a, a loss of self, a lack of self-love and self-worth. It's a desperate and a misguided attempt to be acceptable, likable, or lovable. It's an inability to tolerate distress, and it's an illusion of helplessness to a devastatingly powerful tyrant, the eating disorder. And the word illusion is really important because the eating disorder makes the, the sufferer feel powerless. The, the journey of recovery is about helping someone find power over their eating disorder. It's so ironic because sometimes they feel powerless before the disorder even mm -hmm. starts, and then it like really extends that. Oh, like it amplifies it. Yeah, oh yeah. An eating disorder begins when the wrong set of life circumstances happen at the wrong time, in the wrong order, to the person who has the right personality who's been primed to allow an eating disorder into their life. And this person will be someone who at that point in time doesn't have the coping skills that would be required to get them through whatever circumstances are happening. So to reduce this entire experience to the, wor the word control is to not put it really so lightly, actually just insulting. An eating disorder also is not attention-seeking behavior. In fact, for most people, when they're engaged in an eating disorder, the absolute last thing they want is attention, especially about their body or their disorder. Eating disorders tend to really isolate people from others around them and from their lives. They create a sense of turning into oneself, turning away from others, and really cause people to hibernate more than anything. Acknowledging the disordered symptoms, disordered eating, um, unhealthy body image that may be portrayed actually threatens the existence of the eating disorder. And so to sustain itself, the voice of the eating disorder 
which comes through in the behaviors of the eating disorder, actually wants to hide and is inherently not attention seeking. Lastly, an eating disorder is not something to take lightly and it's not a choice. Eating disorders are serious medical conditions and just like any physical health condition, no one asks for them. Someone with an eating disorder is probably not going to just snap out of it. They are probably going to need some level of professional help and the longer they're able to engage with their eating disorder, the more difficult recovery becomes. So the more attention is placed on it right from the onset, the better. When a person actually begins their eating disorder symptoms, they are essentially oblivious to what's happening and what they're actually setting in motion. If you ask anyone who's suffering from an eating disorder, if they could go back in time and tell their younger self to go down a different path, they would. Yeah. Yeah. If you could choose, you choose not to have it. <laughs> All right, so there's some information about what an eating disorder is not. We hope this video has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, or if you yourself think you may be suffering from an eating disorder, or that someone that you know or love is suffering from an eating disorder, we're gonna include some links to some eating disorder resource information and centers, both in the US and Canada below, as well as information on how to get in touch with both Natalie and I so that you can get help if you need it. If you liked this video or want to show support for the topic, please click the like button below or subscribe for more information from Kernel of Wisdom. Finally, we hope you have a great day and be well. Bye!